again, I was storing a bunch of stuff up over my garage here until I needed it. And one of those things was the windshield. Yup, you guessed it. I cracked the freaking windshield. Hi everyone, how are you? My name is Dan Dulac and welcome back to my channel where I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. Yeah, we're gonna start this video off a little bad news. Happy to say I'm smiling now, but I wasn't for the last few weeks. Yeah, I think you saw it on the intro. I cracked my windshield. Once we get to it, I'll explain how I think it happened. I've moved it around a few different times. I think I chipped the edge of it and then that chip led to a crack. So in any event, I've got the brand new replacement windshield. I'll show you that, uh, receiving that, unboxing it. And then on this episode, we've been attacking the wiring. Tremendous amount of wiring on this. I'm effectively building my complete custom wiring harness aside from some of the uh, terminals that I'll reuse from the Ultima harness on the lights, the rear lights, headlights, and so forth. So I got a lot to show you. Wiring is not a sexy topic. It's not very fun to watch. So I'll just give you some highlights here on this episode. I'll talk you through what I'm doing. The huge news is on July 18th, I have my appointment at the tuner where I will trailer the chassis over to the tuner where we will plug in my OEM ECUs. He has uh, opened them up and removed the immobilizer chip off of the boards. July 18th, pretty exciting day, so stay tuned for that one. This is episode, I don't even know. This is episode number 36. If you missed any of the previous 35 episodes, be sure to go back and check those out. It has been quite the journey going on two years now. This summer will be the time where we're gonna fire up this bad boy and listen to that V10 for the very first time. By the way, special thanks to my kids. They got me this t-shirt back at Christmas time. Figured I'd wear it today in uh, commemoration of Project Top God. So without further ado, let's get back after it. All right, here is the windshield. Brought it from upstairs. And here is the crack. You can see it right there behind my hand. Uh, it's probably five inches long. And there's actually a second little one that has started as well, just to the side. So here's, here's where it starts and then the crack, the crack comes right down. All right, I flipped the windshield over. The crack is on the outer glass. There's outer glass, inner glass, and then of course the, uh, the laminate in between. So it actually grew by about an inch or so, even overnight after I set it back down after checking it out. Thought about taking it to a glass repair shop, but again, one of the reasons I buy these, build these, do these projects is to learn for myself. So I screwed it up. Let me see if I can fix it up. Let me show you what I got here. I got a couple things. First, I got some diamond glass bits and what you do is with the smallest drill bit, there's a 1 8 inch drill bit here. And what you do with this drill bit is the side where it's cracked, which is on the outside, I can feel it with my fingernail, put a tiny little hole, not very deep, just through the first layer of glass, right at the very end of that. And that gives the crack a place to stop. So hopefully it won't get any bigger once we put that little hole in there. I've seen some videos where some folks didn't do that and they were fine, they were, it, it actually worked out. It didn't, it stopped expanding. But I'm gonna do this with a little hole. I think that is the right method to do it. And then I bought this Raynex windshield repair kit and it's got a little suction cup adapter here. I've seen a technique where you can actually run it along the, the, the crack it'll take all the air out and pull it together quite nicely. I've also got a little crack right there. Maybe you can just see it. It's just starting. It kind of crosses over this bigger one. So we're gonna try and fix this up. What a bummer. But anyway, let's give it a shot.
this is too hard to do. I mean, on this curve, getting the drill, it wants to, it wants to slip and roll. And I noticed this crack started to extend even further. So this chip I can fill in pretty easily and then polish this all out. So I'm just gonna go ahead straight with the resin and get this filled and try to get this thing to stop. So let's go straight to the, to the resin. I think we've got a failed attempt here. It did work. If you look at the crack from a 45 degree angle in a couple of places, it disappears. But i um, just gonna clean up the grease here, take the, uh, the plastic cellophane off, sand it down, but I think this is a failed attempt. I've decided I'm gonna get a new windshield anyway. Even if I could fix this and make this disappear, I can't, I can't stomach putting a broken windshield on a brand new car and living with that so a new windshield is going to be on order it's a bummer but live and learn Let's open this thing up and make sure it arrived okay and in shape and no cracks. I guess you could say it was well packaged. Did I ever mention how I love packing peanuts? It's so sweet when the wind blows the second you're trying to unbox this. So I put the windshield away someplace safe this time and this all in the trash and be done with it. work for the Ultima little splash guard I got two of these these go on the front I used it as a scoop works pretty good I'll tell you what though packed by Neil these are the folks that Ultima uses the factory uses for their packing they do not screw around as it comes to the packaging look at the quality of this crate not only with the awesome packing peanuts and all the foam boards but this crate 
it's almost a shame to take it apart. I remember when we first got the kit, how nicely it was packaged. So kudos to the Ultima team and Neil for packaging up these boxes. So nice. It's not cheap, but you know your parts arrive in one piece. Well done. All right, well, I'm neck deep in wiring here. I've got a bunch of things going on. I've got the main loom to the MoTeC PDM. Most of these wires are gonna be routing to my chassis, set of chassis plugs that goes into the engine bay there. And then I've got a bunch of other dash wiring. I've got my loom all made up for my C127 MoTeC display. So that'll be, that'll be easy plug and play when that's ready to go. Uh, what else? I am using some of the original harness that came with the kit. That's laying over here. If you remember back, gosh, many, many episodes ago, I showed this harness. Again, all the uh, relays and fuses and uh, with the MoTeC solid state relay system, I can do away with all that stuff. But I am gonna use, reuse a lot of this wiring if I can. For example, all the front lights plug into these uh, weather pack connectors and the cooling fans and so forth are all there. So I'm gonna reuse a lot of these plugs and the wire. So I'm just stripping the wire of the, of the wrap, some of this plastic wrap, and gonna use a lot of this both for the front uh, and for the rear. Here's the rear and I'll again reuse some of these to hook up all the lights and just patch my wire harness into that. So that's what I'm up to. I've got the Ultima factory wiring diagram here. I've obviously got the R8 wiring diagram that I'm using. So now I'm just running all these circuits one at a time making sure they're good and uh, we should be good to go. I've got a temporary mount here for my recharge studs. So I've got a couple of, of studs here that once this cowl is on, I'll drill holes in the fiberglass and then those will permanently mount. And that's just a place where it'll be easy to access to recharge or jumpstart or whatnot underneath the front clam. So it's all starting to come together. Uh, the engine bay I've got completely wired up from underneath. All that remains is just the ECU plugs under there. Cause again, the ECUs mount against the firewall under there. It really was the only place I had left for room, kind of out of the way of heat and so forth. And with the skid plate I'm gonna put under here, that will protect all those ECUs from, from anything below. But uh, engine bay is all wired up, ready to rip. And uh, just working on the, working on the cockpit and getting this wire harness all set up. And the way I think I'm gonna route this is I'm gonna come across this chassis, this back chassis tube, go all the way over to the corner, down, run it along the base there, and then up this channel here, and then that will go up underneath the front cowl there. And I think for this right there, what I will do is I don't know, like a half, I'll take, get like a one and a half inch or two inch aluminum tube, cut it in half and then just make a, a bracket so I can just bolt that tube up as kind of a, a loom protector that I can then carpet over as well. So that's the current plan there. And uh, other than that, not too hard. Just gotta get, just gotta get after it. So let's do it.
well underway on the wiring on here and let me show you what I'm up to just to get the general harness routed so I actually cut some of this uh, split wire loom tubing just some pieces taped them because in general this is where the looms gonna go the route so down along here up and then obviously in and over to the PDM and the main main power center and then similarly, I've got some harnesses going across underneath the dash all the way over there. So this is cool. This is just temporary and again, holds the wires. And uh, once all the wiring is done, then I will loom this up proper, tape it up, secure it and be done with it. The other thing, this uh, wire you see here, this twisted pair, yellow and green, that is my primary CAN bus. Uh, circuit wire. I've got a 120 ohm resistor right there and normally uh, the ECU in the engine bay will be that resistor at the other end of the CAN bus. So that's one end and then the far end is over there. Walk over there and show you. So here is the far end of the CAN bus and I've got this ECU master USB to CAN. This will allow me to plug my laptop into the CAN bus and program the PDM, the MoTeC PDM. This also acts as the other end, the termination point for the CAN bus. So that's what you need. On the CAN bus, you need 120 ohm resistors at either end of your CAN bus to terminate. So I've got one here and obviously 120 ohm resistor, just temporary right there because again, the ECUs are at the tuner. So I don't have a termination, proper termination point uh, there yet. So the resistor will work just fine. This will get me going just so I can plug my computer in, program the PDM, and then start to test all the circuits. Daisy chaining or basically some of the slave um, CAN bus devices will be my eight button switch. Again, I've just got this temporarily mounted here. As you can see, 3D printed a mount. So I will tap in this eight button switch CAN bus into this point here. I will make a tap point for the MoTeC C127 display, an OBD2 port and so forth. So uh, all my CAN devices will basically We'll basically tap off this main CAN bus circuit and that should be good to go so I've already got the PDM tapped into the CAN bus as well into this main harness right here and uh, now I'm starting to just wire up the power circuits one by one but the first call of duty will be to get that PDM 30 powered up and programmed so we're gonna to get to that as well. So I have the original Audi R8 shifter mechanism. This is normally what you use to obviously put the car in drive and reverse, neutral park and so forth. I've got the wire harness here. I'm gonna use this temporarily so that I can 
um, decode the CAN bus signals, if you will, so that I can program my eight button switch with park, neutral, reverse buttons, as well as maybe a manual and um, automatic or sport, sport button, if you will, so that I can use the shift, the, the shift paddles there. Um, I might need, I'm not sure how I'm gonna program the shift paddles yet, but in any event, I will just use this temporarily. This will allow me to, to get the car operational and I'll just temporarily affix this somewhere in the cockpit. Uh, but again, use it to scan the uh, hex codes off the CAN bus so that I can program what I need to program to make, make these paddles work. So uh, that should be uh, an interesting project. And then the other thing I mentioned I wanted to mention was I again temporarily mounted my switch panel and my um, ignition key here. I think I'm going to keep this this key tumbler uh, just as a way to turn on the ignition, but I'll have a start button programmed uh, into my eight button switch there as well. Again, this is just temporary. 3D printed this part, keep it out of the way but it will go uh, somewhere on the dash. I'm thinking of making a center console, carbon fiber center console of sorts, uh, and or just mount this straight up on the dash. We'll see. So that's just temporary. And uh, here's all the various uh, labels for this eight button switch. Once I get it programmed, um, I'll put the appropriate labels on there and should be good. my can adapter plugged into the CAN bus trying to talk to the PDM I'm using this ECU master USB to CAN which I thought worked but turns out I need to use the MoTeC version of this so that I can talk to the PDM I thought you could pretty much use any USB to CAN adapter but clearly not not supported and then I looked at ECU masters website they said the same thing their device only supports their devices MoTeC devices only support MoTeC devices. So another $300 part I got to order and then we'll get this running. Um, but clearly it does show the CAN bus is streaming data, which is at least confirmation that the CAN bus is working. So anyway, we'll get started on uh, some additional wiring and I'll get that MoTeC UTC adapter and we should be good to go. All right, well, since I can't configure my PDM, I figured I would test a couple other circuits, namely the iLift system. So I have the front and rear lift set in this car. If you remember back when I was first putting the suspension together, I installed this air lift, both front and rear suspension system. Well, I've got it wired up and we're gonna test her out here. This is a momentary button, again, just temporary, where I've got one, press will bring the front end up, two more presses will bring the rear end up, and then down will bring both ends down. So here we go, let's give this a shot. We're gonna go up first. And there you go, you can see the piston comes out there. It's about inch and seven eighths lift, I noticed, I measured it. And the front is a little bit aggressive. I'm a little surprised. I mean, there's not a lot of weight up there and uh, it's a, it is does raise a little bit aggressive and I've got the weight setting at the lowest possible uh, setting for the iLift system because you can, you can enter into the computer the weights and I think I've got this set at the lowest which is like 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. There's no way that if the front end of this car is that heavy. So could be pretty aggressive. Now let's look at the rear end 
as I hit this button. There we go. So the rear end is up now. You can see the piston there fully extended. Again, about the same on the back, about an inch and seven eighths up off the ground. And then when we hit the down button, I think the rear end will go down first. There goes the rear and then the front. And the front is down. So works pretty well. Um, again, I'm a little bit disappointed that the front end kind of just snaps up so quickly. Here, I'll do it again. And you watch how quickly this just shoots up. I mean, it, it goes up quick. Less than a second, I think that front end is up. <laughs> so it, it fires right up there. But is what it is. So the front end, rear end, got a lift in there and that works. All right, making progress slowly but surely here on the wiring. Let me show you what I've got currently. I'm about ready to start pinning the two major connectors I have on the rear firewall here. So all the wires are almost routed. Let's check it out. All right, so here is the harness that remains from the PDM30. Most of these are eight amp circuits and some switches, switch wiring. But as you can see, down here, we get the main loom running up over and we'll go right into my main couplers there, connectors. So I'm gonna start pinning all of these wires into there, start getting that set up. I've also started a second loom that's gonna go kind of across, route underneath the dash and over that way. So it's really starting to come together here, the main harness here. And then once I get my USB to CAN adapter for the MoTeC system, then I'll be able to program that MoTeC PDM30 to power these various circuits. And we should be off and running here. I've got myself a proper mess here and here's where we're at so I have got the major cockpit loom back to the engine bay pretty much done again I will finish finish this up once we do all the electrical testing test the ECUs make sure I don't have to run any more circuits back there so I decided rather than to go up along here drop it down behind the driver's seat and then along the floor behind the air lift or the air tank for the lift system and then around the passenger seat and then it will come up again I'll put like a conduit a metal or an aluminum half tube or something there make a conduit then I'll carpet over it and then this will just go up under the dash so some of the loom um, continues on down to the PDM and then some of the loom continues under the dash over to the dashboard the C127 display and again that keypad is gonna go again over here somewhere on the dash as well as the the OBD2 port and the ignition key the ignition key will stay in that general area but the OBD2 port I'll put kind of under the dash in that area under the steering wheel. My goal here is, is to get the electronics done so that again, just the bare necessities so we can test the ECUs at the tuner, fire up the systems and make sure we're good to go. So the next step for me is, is I've got to get the USB to CAN adapter so I can connect my computer to the MoTeC 
so I can start to program the circuits when they come on, the voltages, etc. And then I can group them and I can create some logic as well. So it's really starting to get there. Uh, pretty excited about how this is coming out. We're getting there. So again, on July 18th, we start to put this to the test. All right, guys, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I got a lot done over the last couple of weeks. The next video will hopefully be in about a week's time. I'm going to finish up, again, most of the core basic necessity wiring to get her ready over so I can get this on the trailer, head to the tuner, and fire up these systems for the first time. So until then, we'll see you next time.